everyone so today i'm gonna cover how to make a arbitrage bot on catalyst enigma um, this tutorial will be pretty basic but it should get you started so you can sort of make your own tweaks um, so let's get to it so blank slate um, first thing we want to do is import um, run algorithm from catalyst utils run algo import run algorithm so what one run algorithm is is sort of like uh, it's what starts uh, the bot um, yeah so when you do this you can see it has initialize and that's sort of like your initialize function and we're just gonna call it initialize then we also have handle data and that's sort of what handles um, the data on each candlestick so for each candlestick what do you want to do that's what the handle data function is um, so we'll call ours handle data for simplicity and then lastly you have the last function which is analyze so analyze is sort of like after your back test is finished um, how do you want to visualize um, your algorithm so you can make a graph to see um, what's your algorithm performant how did your algorithm do against the versus you just buying and holding stuff like that um, and then after we have those three uh, we can do our capital base that's sort of like what money you're starting out with and some order functions sort of use capital base if you put like I want to order 100% they'll use capital base but I don't think it really matters for this tutorial we'll just put 100 um, then we also have live, we're gonna do false, that means we're back testing. Um, base currency, I, uh, for the sake of this tutorial, we're gonna do Bitcoin as our base currency, and we, we're probably gonna do a Ethereum to Bitcoin uh, arbitrage bot. We also have exchange name. Um, and then for this one, whoops, missed the comma here. Uh, for this one, we're gonna put in Bitfinex and Paul Nindex. The reason we do that is because um, Catalyst already has the daily data for both of these markets. Um, you can check what data they have on their status page. I'll also link that down below. And then we want to check the data frequency. For this tutorial, we're gonna do minute data frequency. And then lastly, you wanna set your dates that you, you wanna run the back test for. Um, so we're gonna do PD. Oh, we need to import pandas actually. So import pandas as PD. All right, so then we can do two date time. And we're just gonna start off with like one day so the test runs like reasonably quick. Um, but obviously you can test on like months of data if you wanted to. And then lastly, we need an end time. So end time. Date time. We do 12, 13, BTC equals Sweet. Um, so that's that's our run algorithm. You can see there's like red underlines on the stuff we haven't done yet. So we need to make an initialize function. We also need to make a handle data function and we need to make an analyze function. So let's get started with the initialize function. Um, let me do in define initialize. Context, um, and this is where we're gonna get the tickers and tell like Catalyst what pairs we want to use to run our arbitrage algorithm. So for this tutorial, we're gonna do bitrex. So we're just gonna this sort of defines a variable within the context variable. The context variable is a variable that can be just used between initialize, handle data, and analyze. So that's sort of like the scope of it. Um, so this one we're going to do context.exchanges bitfinex and then we'll do the same for polynex. Bam. So the reason why these two work is because we defined them down here. If you didn't define the two exchanges in the exchange name of the run algorithm, it's not going to work. Um, and then after that we want to define each page trading pair so let's do this trading pair is equal to symbol let's 
just do Ethereum to Bitcoin, and then we can do context.bitfinex. Bitrex, sorry, bitrex dot me. Um, we need import symbol, it looks like, so from catalyst.api import symbol. Sick. Sweet. And then next we gotta do Polynex trading pair equals symbol. There's Bitcoin context dot Polynex dot name. Sweet. So now we have initialized um, basically like two tickers. Um, the Ethereum Bitcoin ticker for Bit Bitrex and the Ethereum Bitcoin ticker for Polynex. And that's it. That's that's done. That's initialized. That's that's the entire function. Like it's good. Now we can move on to handle data. So handle data takes in context and data. Oops. Handle data. Cool. And here we're gonna get the price from the tickers. Um, the tickers contain other information, high close, stuff like that, but we're keeping it simple. We're just gonna grab the price. So we do Polynix price is equal to data dot current um, context dot Paul and the next trading pair, and we'll just grab the price. Next one we want to do is bit rex price basically data dot current. Um, we do context dot bit rex. I'm just gonna copy this over, and then price as well damn so now we have both prices for every minute of our data um, so just to illustrate this um, I'm just gonna print this out real quick so we'll print out the date first and then we can print out the prices and then I'll show you what I mean and maybe it'll help you understand how handle data actually works um, but yeah, it's actually not that hard. Um, like you can code up this simple algorithm probably like half an hour or so. It's not actually gonna work and make you money, but it's a good starting point, I would say. Um, so let's do polynomial price. And then lastly, we wanna print out bid or excess price. So yeah, so that sh should work. Um, you see, we haven't still defined analyze. Um, I'm not gonna um, talk about the analyze function in this tutorial. Um, I'll probably do the next one where I'll show you how to like graph your algorithm versus like other algorithms, or or maybe your algorithm versus the market. But let me know if you guys want that. I'll I'll try to try to put that out. Um, but yeah, let's give this a run. So we just right click here, run video tutorial. Let's see what we got here. Catalyst is also not the fastest at starting up. Um, yeah, this always takes some time. Um, oh, but there you go. So if I hit pause here on the execution, this is kind of like one of the benefits of using an IDE like PyTrime. You can just pause execution. Um, we can look here. So we can see that I did uh, 2017, December 12th to December 13th. And now we can see the price. So say on December 12th of 2017 at you know 12.24 a.m. or in 24 hour time that, these were the two prices. So the tickers work. And with that information, you know, we can just do some basic, very basic algebra to execute the trades, right? So let me let me do that and then I'll run it again. Alright, so this is a very simplified algorithm, all right? So don't go shouting like, why does it make me money? It's not gonna make you money. This is just like a proof of concept so you can sort of like get the idea. I'm not gonna talk about slippage in this video. I'm not gonna talk about um, like, when is the best time to execute the arbitrage? Should I do it now? Should I do it later? You know, how, how big should I wait for the gap to happen? Um, or the gap between the two prices, like how large should I wait? Um, but let's let's do something real simple. Let's say like the price on Poloniex is greater than the price on Bitrex. 
What do we want to do here? We want to buy on Bitrex and sell on Poloniex. Correct? That's what we want to do, right? It's good because we'll make money that way, right? Um, if only it was that simple in real life, though, sadly. Um, this sort of strategy sort of assumes that you have a float of Bitcoin and Ethereum on, on both exchanges. That way you don't have to go through the whole, like, Buy some on big, buy some on this exchange, and then wait for the transfer of the other exchange. I think that's kind of silly. It makes way more sense for you to have a float on both exchanges, and then for you to rebalance sort of like the accounts from time to time. Um, yeah, so that's that's the assumption I'm making here. Um, then we want to do order. Um, I think we actually need to import order here. So order, boom, and then. Order asset. Yes, asset. And then we want our asset to be the trading pair. So context stock right? trading pair. Then we need amount. Let's just say like one Bitcoin, sure. And then I'm gonna say limit price. Um context dot We want this price here actually, so boom. Bam. Then order asset. So this one's the buy on Bitrex. And then to sell, we just do context.polynix trading pair amount. And then we just do a negative amount here. So we're going to do negative one. Um, I believe that sells one Ethereum. Yeah. And then uh, we're going to do limit price, polynix price. Boom. Also, what if the other one, right? Bitrex is greater than Polynex. What do we want to do here? We want to we want to do the opposite, right? So we can just copy this guy here, and then we want to sell on Bitrex, and then we want to buy on Polynex. Bam! That's it. You're done. That's like the simplest of simple arbitrage bots you can make. Um, I'm gonna run it right now, and then you're gonna see what's what's happening. So, here we go. Dun 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 dun. <sighs> okay. So let's see what we got here. We have a lot of these. If you notice a lot of red, the exchange blood order has not reached trigger price. So what that means is like the order didn't fill, like the order didn't complete. And that could be due to a number of reasons, but the biggest one is like slippage. Um, slippage is basically like when you try to place an order, but the price has already moved in that time, either due to like market conditions or like your order was so big that your, your order moved the price of the ticker. So um, I'll talk about how to like sort of mitigate that in um, the next video with like adjusted prices, but let's just keep this simple. All right, so look. On December 12th at, you know, 0.55, so like 12.55 a.m., the price of Polynex was this, the price of Bitrex was that, and we can see the price of Polynex is clearly slightly higher. You know, we got 0 0.0304 versus 0 .03, 0 0.0303. So then we buy on Bitrex, sell on Polynex. There you go. Um, if you guys have any questions, uh, feel free to leave them below. Um, I'm also going to write a blog post on this and I'll post that code, like all this code there. So you can, uh, just copy and paste it, play around with it yourself. Um, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one.